Ça qu'a fait. Ça qu'a fait, ça qu'a fait tout le monde. Bienvenue dans l'autre épisode Corim. Encore une fois, nous retournons avec un bel, bel, bel épisode et nous avons un invité spécial. Et I like to say that, invité spécial, <laughs> super spécial. Et invité ça, non pas, c'est Laurie Joseph, c'est founder of Haitian Realty. Et c'est une plateforme qui là qui pour uh, aider uh, communauté haïtienne with home ownership. Et lui là je dis hein, lui parle parle nous a little bit about herself. Et puis tout lui parle parle nous de plateforme non, how that platform get started. Et pour qui ça lui lui commence son plateforme comme ça pour aider moun dans communauté haïtienne. Lori, welcome to Corinth Podcast. <laughs> merci merci, thank you. C'est tout un plaisir pour me là avec nous. Um, suivre Corim Podcast sur tout média social yo, suivre Luther, moi ça n'a fait avec Asian Millennial, and I love it, and thank you for having me. Ah, ou, ou branche vous, vous êtes en train de en anglais, en train de en créole là bien, because this is what we do, right? We speak Creole, English, Creole, English, we bounce, <laughs> bounce yes. yeah, Creole English. So typically, if you if you've heard us before, so typically before we get started into like questions, we like to kind of give you an opportunity to flex your Haitian muscle, right? To to show showcase your Haitian pride. And so your question uh, is a simple one. I am so Haitian that I fill in the blank. I'm so Haitian that I blah blah blah. That I, that I teach my kids how to make pate all day. Hey! <laughs> really? I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Listen. Pate Cody all the time. Nice. nice. That's good. Yeah. That's what's up. Okay. Yeah. I had to I had to tell my wife to stop cooking, making Pate Cody because we would be getting too big in the house. I love Pate Cody. So you, you put like all that uh, stuff you have in Haiti in it too, like the zoo, the hot the okay. zoo, Oh, so. oh man. Yep. Chic die. I take code without it. Oh my goodness! Yes. That's okay. Good. That's really good. So I'm, I'm I'm glad you're doing that actually. So you know, teaching your kids, you know, about the Haitian culture and uh, the, the the food and music and things like that. So that's that's really good. So Lori, so let's let's um let's let's get right into it, right? So, palim palim a little bit about Lori and Kieski Lori. Who is Lori? I think the biggest part of my life is being a mom. So mm. I, I am a mother. I attended Florida A&M University. So I am an HBCU grad. Yes. I, Rattlers. I am, yes, go Rattlers. Okay. All right. I graduated in 2013 with a master's in chemistry. I started teaching as a chemistry professor. Okay, so I'm teaching all of my people, all of the nurses, because, you know, no get a pill, nurse na community. You do. I was yeah. teaching Miami Dade, so mm. I faced with a lot of my people. Mm-hmm. I also taught at Broward College, okay. which is about the same. It's just, you know, just further away, but, we you know, it's about the same type of vibe. It's the same, you know, our people still. So I'm teaching a lot of Haitians. And I'm getting into teaching. And then um, and then real estate happened. <laughs> so mm. all that masters in chemistry just like flew, flew away. And I um, became a mom, became a wife, mom. And then my husband started working as a physician. So he has no time. And I'm like, okay, it's time to become, you know, to be here for the kids. Because at least... Mm. You know, one of us must be available to cater to the children that we choose to put in this world. Right. So that happens. And I had so much, feel like, a little more free time. And I started thinking of financial freedom. You know, I started reading about that. And then real estate came along. And I'm realizing, well, if if the realtors are making this money off of me, I might as well do it myself. So that's. Then I became a realtor, and then the rest is history. And here I am now, here, as the owner of Haitian Realty, pushing for homeownership in the community. Right, right. Doing the same for our people. I like that. So, yeah. So when you said real estate happened, you said that twice, and then you said financial freedom. Which one came first? Est-ce que vous avez 
financial freedom and you say, how do I do that? What's the avenue to do that? And it, real estate was the first thing that you thought of, or was it like real estate? And you said, you know what? I can actually gain my financial freedom in this, in the, using this space. So what mm -hmm. came first? Financial freedom is always first. Okay. And to be honest, in my head, I've always said that patient millennial money is the prequel to patient wealthy. Because mm. if you're not financially at least aware mm -hmm. of the do's and don'ts, which mm -hmm. is what the Haitian millennial is pushing, mm -hmm. you're not going to have this real estate freedom because that takes a lot of, you know, cutting on... Mm -hmm. Yeah, commitment. Yeah, it, yeah, it takes yeah. Commitment. Sacrifice. It, yeah, yeah. For who game that first part, which is that financial literacy, and then for you to be able to put a real estate part of it together. So literacy come first, financial literacy, and then real estate investment comes next. Okay. Nice, nice. That's 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 amazing. That's amazing. You 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 think about this. So that's something that we notice in the Haitian community that we don't do as often, right? To look back and see, okay, where am I and what where am I, am I trying to go, right? And in terms of financial literacy, and that's 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 our goal with Haitian millennial money is to. Um, you know, normalize financial literacy in, in our in a Haitian community. And, and we can talk about things like that. And we can see what are different avenues. If I'm not going to, if if I am to be available for my kids, what are some of the jobs that I can do right now, where mm -hmm. I'll both, you know, make some passive income or make some type of income, but also be there for my, my, my family as well. So that's, that's, it's great that you, you thought of that. So, but getting into real estate though, like it's somebody, you know, guide you into that or you just found an article um, and then you stumble. So, <laughs> they're so, they're so, they're so, so, oh, wow. so I, I started listening to bigger packets at the name, huh? Bigger packets. Who? Is it bigger, bigger packets? packets pass. Oh, there you yeah, go. <laughs> I sign up on their website. I started <clears throat> into it. And I hear these people talking about, I own 25 doors. And at this point, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. I own 50 doors. And I, I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> and one guy started breaking down on how he's going to retire by 30 because he would own passive income through just real estate. So he didn't have to work until 62 or 4 whatever age we have now to work. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to do that. He figured if he owns this many property, he'll live free for the rest of his mm -hmm. life. He never mm -hmm. had to work again. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that. I wanted more time. The more your kids, you know, they grow, the more you want to be home. And the more things you have to do, the recitals don't stop. The football games, like both of my kids are in sports. They're both in extracurricular things, so it takes time, and I know I needed the time, and I was that's when I started getting into it. So it's what I'm sort of suli konsa. I'm got on YouTube video, and then I'm I'm hooked. And to be honest, I started working at a very young age. At 16, I was already working. So working is in me even if i didn't have to i honestly didn't have to work i didn't have to bring an income to my house i didn't have to do anything but still the need to do so and that's how i stumbled upon real estate so real estate became the thing right you said that working was always your thing right um but typically when you talk about like getting a w2 um versus like that whole entrepreneurial like kind of endeavor right how did you how did you i guess manage that thought like did you have any fears it's like oh man i'm really like this is i'm leaving a nine to five where i know the money's coming every two weeks talk to us about that part a lot of fear but at the same time i was um fortunate to have my spouse who could actually take care of everything with that. right 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 so i was I, I mean, I mean, I was learning on new skills, so I felt intimidated. Um, at the same time, I felt like I was free to actually experience it because I had nothing to lose. <laughs> you know, if mm. it happens, it happens. If it mm. didn't, it didn't. 
but it was very serious. I, I, I took it extremely seriously to the point where I had plans to, like, it was a very serious step for me. Very fearless, a lot of fear still for everything that I do. If it doesn't make me scared, I am not probably doing it, but mm-hmm. filming because it, it's, it's not moving enough. So yes, very scary. I mean, I, I turned to reading, to podcasts, to all of these things to help with those fear because it was new. I, I mean, when I started real estate, I didn't have even my first home yet. So oh, wow. it's a long way. It's a mm-hmm. very yeah, long that's... way. So, yes. Awesome. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love the fact that even though you were scared, but you still you know, push on, you said, okay, well, I don't know this, this is an area where I'm, you know, super uncomfortable, but I'm going to figure it out, right? I'm going to listen to podcasts, I'm going to read blogs, I'm going to follow people who are actually doing it. And that way I could, exactly. So that way I could start doing it as well. Uh, Speaking of that, did you have anyone uh, in your path that you actually that, you know, actually guided you to get into that or like even getting into, because I know there's, you know, getting your license, right? You have to study for it and getting into a broker and things like that. So how is that process for you? Uh, Like if somebody listening right now, who's trying to get into uh, being a realtor. To be honest, I didn't have any immediate person. Like I didn't have a family member. Mm. I reached out to people online. I became a lot more social. I, um, I knew that I had to find somebody. (laughs) So I had to actually just step out of that comfort zone of being shy and just reach out to people online. Like people online are waiting to actually help. Mm. A lot of them just, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. like I have people reach out to me who wants to become realtor. It is Mm. an absolute pleasure to tell you how to go on. Mm. So when I had to become a realtor, of course, you take a course I did it on my own online, but you can also go in person and do it. But I do better by myself online because I'm a loner at heart. And <laughs> so I took it by myself and then <laughs> went in. With, you went to your city or the state um, with Pearson View. You take uh, your certificate. What is that? Not certificate. They call it something else, but license. license. Your license mm-hmm. exam. Um, you pass it on the first try because you are dedicated. That's what you do. <laughs> <when you're Asian. laughs> That's what you do. I, I love it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking and, about. <laughs> and, and, and you choose a brokerage. Mm. And um, I've made mistakes. You know, I, I didn't choose the right broker at first. And then, you know, if it doesn't, you know, reach out to other realtors and see how they're doing and how what brokerages are offering. Because your next step to pick a brokerage is going to be one of the most critical one in that path to, you know, becoming a realtor. You know, you do want support. You do want to make sure that my broker is um, patient and he owns several businesses. So he guides his um, realtors through that entrepreneurial path. So he tends Mm. to be more hands-on. He tends to be more, you know, you call him at 7 p.m., you'll find him the type of person. You text awesome. him, you'll get a text back versus my previous worker that I didn't even know his cell number. Wow. So picking a brokerage is very important when you're actually entering this real estate field. I'll say probably the most important out of the three. Yeah. Okay. So I have I have some questions. So I... <laughs> You said picking a brokerage and um is that is that for for those who don't know is that different than starting out on your own and and especially like with Haitian Realty like did you why did you choose that route to say you know what I now I have the the license I'm going to go under a brokerage as opposed to starting you on your own I guess outright I guess and then follow up to that is when did Haitian Realty come out from that or how did that come about too Okay, so when you get your license, you can, you are, 
I don't know how to say, but you are not a W-2 employee anymore. So mm-hmm. you are a contractor. So realtors mm-hmm. are actually contractors. So mm-hmm. you can have your own business. You can have whatever you want. As long as you, on, in the state of Florida and all the other states, I believe, mm-hmm. you need a broker to sign all of your papers, basically. So the broker is there for legal reasons. But you can have yourself. You can um, have your business as you wish because you are a contractor. So basically, the worker is contracting you to do a job. So you're a contractor. You're on your own. You do as you wish. You push your business as you see fit. But I started Haitian Wealthy because I I saw the names. And... um, it's it's really it's it's really sad when I'm helping an 18 year old white male that knows already the advantage of home ownership mm. versus when I go live on TikTok and until now I'll have you know our Haitian counters mm-hmm. asking me isn't it the same exact thing when you rent and when you own okay so it's it's I there's a big need because mm. they do think that it's better to rent. I mean, it's better for Bill Gates to rent because he doesn't need right. He already has it all. Right. But for you mm. to say as a regular human being <laughs> to that it's it's better. So I still have my counterparts fighting me all right. the time. That Oh, you're pushing us to get a mortgage. You know how look, I see per mortgage. Like yeah. one of my biggest you pay bill. You pay bill. You pay bill. You pay bill. No bill. You pay mortgage. Mortgage no pay mal toujours. We're not gonna pay rent for like ten years. Double the price too. If we deal for that, for us to have no mortgage, we pay do more. Man, pay mortgage, Papa. Yeah. 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 You can't mortgage like that. It seems foreign to us it seems foreign i mean it was foreign to most of our parents my mom came here cleaning places to survive so i understand she didn't have the same you know means what is the same what means the The same same means that she ended up giving me and the foundation that she gave you she didn't have that yeah Mm -hmm. exactly so i'm thinking now with social media, the rise of social media, and the rise of sharing information. And I, I can see it. I can see that it's it's getting to people. I can see, I mean, I have people following for a reason because they mm-hmm. want to learn real estate. Mm-hmm. So there is a big need in our community. Until you start working as a realtor with our people, you don't realize how much they don't know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Versus, I'm working with a white 18 year old male, and they already have whole the knowledge. Yeah. On, yeah. On, they're buying their first home at 18. They're going to college. Their parents buying them a duplex to stay in, and they take that duplex money. They buy another one on their own. We don't do that in our community. We don't even push it as a thing. Yeah. You go Someone... to college, rent. Someone tell about when they love probably do renting or versus ownership. If I call him Bill Gates, his name can sell <laughs> assets, exactly. mm-hmm. plural. His, his literal assets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His name. These yeah. people like people like Bill Gates and and you know Trump. When he, so many buildings you go to, they're just using his name, and he exactly. gets what he needs to get from it. So these people are are at, at particular places where they can afford to not look at you know, home ownership as, as a means to an end. But if you didn't start like that, you need multiple, you know, you need to think about streams of incomes. You need to think about how owning a home can, can become an asset, you know, and, and definitely can help in terms of your, your uh, long-term goals. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I hear you. And thank you for educating our people and thank you for her taking that risk. And you talk about TikTok going on TikTok. I don't even have TikTok. Going on (laughs) <laughs> going on tiktok and, and finding our people to educate uh, i commend you for that 
Yeah. I get I, the raw people on TikTok. I get the raw ones. It's I'm fun. sure. Yeah. So let, let's let's talk about it a little bit, right? So and like Michael was saying, I, I thank you for putting that platform together to educate our people. And it's kind of similar path to Haitian millennial money in that sense, where we're looking at it from the personal finance perspective, but you are diving into the homeownership part, which is great. So let, let's, let's talk about it, right? Because there are some reasons why, like some valid reason why, why someone would like push not to have a home. Uh, I'm a homeowner myself and Mike is a homeowner as well. And I can, to, I can tell you from my first experience that it was frightening, right? Um, I think I was telling Mac, like the, um, I remember when I was working with my lender and they sent me the loan to sign uh, the documents and everything. And I called up my pastor. I was like, pastor, I need a quick prayer because I'm about to sign my life for me. <laughs> that's a lot of money that, that I'm owning oh, up to right now. <laughs> oh man, yo, I was that's sweating. So, <laughs> so I committed I for 15 years, 30, 30 years, 30, 30 years, years, right? Now they have 40 year loans now. Right, 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 right. So I could see why someone would be scared and they, they you know, that's, it's a valid feeling, right? And, and again, I went through that and, uh, I, but I want you to talk about the benefits of that, like of the benefits mm -hmm. of owning a home in the US in particular, and, and, and why is it better than renting for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Um, so let, let's start with renting. So when you're renting, you're paying your landlords their, you know, the rent. Mm -hmm. And usually um, when I'm putting numbers together for investors, the numbers must, they must make sense before they even purchase a unit. Okay, so if the numbers for the rent does not surpass their total expenses, most likely they're not buying that unit because they cannot charge enough rent to actually pay everything and have a profit. Mm -hmm. So when you're paying your rent, I mean, it, it's, I know realtors online, I've been saying this a lot that you're paying somebody else's mortgage and it is absolutely true. You are paying somebody's mortgage and mm -hmm. They're charging you enough to pay the mortgage and to still have a profit. Profit, yeah, right, right. So at the end of the 15 or 30 years or even the 40 years, you end up having zero dollars in equity. So zero because you paid somebody else's and that landlord ends up with all the equity on that house or that unit or that home or that apartment, whatever it is. So they end up with all of the equities. You have nothing that's when you're renting but at least when you own you pay a portion of your mortgage every month a portion goes into your principal mm -hmm. and the portion and the other portion goes into the interest which you give to the bank because they loan you the money to buy that house and mm -hmm. i know how luther got scared because the first <laughs> is it seven years of the mortgage yeah straight to the end yeah Okay, you're paying a lot of interest because yeah. you don't have that much capital to buy a home and it makes sense to use somebody's money to do it and pay them a fee and it's for a long time. So it's durable. They make it durable for the borrower. So other benefits when you own real estate, anybody knows that the Hispanic realtors, they have an organization Mm -hmm. that they use to propel home ownership in the Hispanic community. So they're actually going, when it comes to minority, the fastest in home ownership. Mm -hmm. So they have a group of lawyers, professionals, realtors, you know, lobbyists. They pushed to get funding for their people and they're growing home ownership in the Hispanic community. Oh. And through all communities, home ownership is the cornerstone of wealth. It's mm. known. Everyone is going after it for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's because they know. They know. Everyone yeah. knows that real estate ownership is the absolute thing 
that can be passed on to the kids that can be in your family for generation because we do have a disconnection we do tend to think for the now and we don't think of our children you know I, we want to leave the kids with something we don't want the kids to start where we started right so we need yeah. to give the kids a boost you know if i started by working in order to start my company i want my kids to have the funds there to start theirs when they're ready not you know to go and make the money because then you give them that boost and you make them better and therefore you know they're gonna do even better for their children so every community is know that and they're pushing for that spending a lot of money to push that into their community for a reason to better that community so in the u.s you get tax advantages mm. you get you know i never understood i never understood that <laughs> until real estate and realized yep. that it's legal to not pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So you're missing out on a lot of opportunities when you're not investing in real estate in the U.S. It's pushed a lot. It is probably the most beneficial investment you'll make whenever it has to do with owning real estate. The advantages when it comes to taxes is exponential. Yep, they call it the number one wealth building tool. So, Absolutely. Yes, yeah, I mean, ta what it is. Ta tax loopholes are are there for people that that wants to do a certain thing, invest, and and kind of be a little. I agree with you a hundred percent. You mentioned uh, the power of home ownership too, and I'm, I'm thinking about it. It is a power. It, it is a power because, like, unless you know you stop paying your own mortgage no one can kick you out uh no one right can. that's that's one it's of the other benefits that i'm get, thinking it's easier to get your loan out loan servicer to extend right. your due date when you have right. a mortgage then your landlord right. right yeah they don't have Unless that patience there's a memorandum, yeah. you're paying that landlord mm -hmm. but you can push your mortgage for months so yeah. I, I hear you. You said they don't have that patience. I looked at Luther. Um, they don't have that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't have that patience. <laughs> Luther don't have that patience. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh so it's it's interesting that that you that you said that I I I you talked about the Hispanic community, and we were talking about this a couple months ago in Haitian Millennial Money, and we were talking about it's this organization that they have called Prospera mm -hmm. Florida, which is like Hispanics mm -hmm. literally there to help entrepreneurship. They just have money around for each other. And it's interesting that you brought that up because, yeah, I think a lot of times when the Haitian community, we're the, the last to get in, involved into something. Mm -hmm. We're the most skeptical. You know, you know, some some part of it is the black community, too, but specifically yeah. us Haitians and um. It's interesting. I, I love the fact that you dropped that, that there are other communities already getting ahead of that. They're already coming together. They're doing, they're putting funds together. They're lobbying for, for importance and they're lobbying for a voice. They're lobbying for space and they're using their power, home ownership, um, they're buying power. So yes, I thank you for, for saying all of that. My, my next question to you is uh, when it comes to Haitian realty, like what is success for you, like for Haitian royalty? When you're looking at either a year in review or you're looking at just success as you would define it for you, what would that be? We have a few aspects. One is to reach the mass. We want to reach the people that are working hard, remedial jobs to make it, to know that they too can own a house. And they can. It's not hard. <laughs> They have so many programs available for our people to own real estate, especially for minorities. You know, it's everywhere. You know, it's it, they're all coming out with zero down and zero this, and they are reachable. You can actually reach that. We also want to reach the, you know, the professionals. 
Um, as a matter of fact, next year would be the year that we do a lot of more one-on-one -on -one with professionals. Our first one would be in February, where we are reaching out to more of the Haitian artists, Haitian influencers. Mm. So we want these people to, they know that they too can own real estate with the money that they're making as yeah. influencers. Because yeah. we do want even those people to know that, hey, what are you doing with your, like, here's a place to invest yeah. in. We so, want the lawyers, the doctors to know that, okay, you can reach out to Haitian royalty. We'll put a plan together for you. We'll get you to home ownership, to investing, to investing, the word that I'm looking for repeatedly, to invest consistently. Consistently. Because the path to home, to, to real estate, <sighs> portfolio growth lies in being consistent. You don't need to do a lot all the time, but if you take that little bit all the time, then it mm -hmm. takes you more farther than if you just do a lump. Yeah. Okay. A serial um, investor. Yeah, absolutely. Serial. Yeah. And one of the main thing that I'm pushing that I would love to be the talk is that real estate or home ownership does not stop real estate investment so once we become a homeowner we're like okay that's it we're done <laughs> nothing else no right like one of my major thing is there's too many ways to invest in real estate for you to just choose one there's mm -hmm. way too many you know for for professionals we want to get you to invest with um you know in REITs in real mm -hmm. estate investment trust you know, lend your money out to people that are investing. Mm -hmm. So that way you get a return. Become the bank. You're the right, money bank right, now. Right, right, lend right. your money to these people. They're waiting on it. There are platforms mm -hmm. for that. For high earning professionals, there are something called syndication where you can actually invest like Trump. Okay. Where you can actually get the biggest tax cut of your life. You would not believe it, but that exists. Trump is not i'm not saying he's not doing anything illegal i don't know the man <laughs> she said i'm not endorsing now but bus it bus will the good job and die bus will not come 2024 right around the corner i don't know you know there there are more ways to invest in real estate and just purchasing that first home so we want to we want people to start thinking that okay once i purchase that home for example there is a couple that i'm working with they they bought lands and now i'm getting them to invest in syndication so syndication is basically real estate on steroids mm. so basically you have investors who wants to buy a hundred or two hundred unit apartment? Mm -hmm. Okay, and they need mm -hmm. investors, mm -hmm. so they come to you for the money, and in part you own part of that investment. Okay. So we can do that too, and in turn you get the tax cut, and the tax cut comes in a hundredfold because now you're looking at two hundred things that they're depreciating because right. real estate is honestly the only asset in right. America that you can use appreciation and depreciation right. at the same time. Right. So when tax yeah. comes, like, okay, this, this door has been here for 10 years. Mm. It's not worth that much anymore. The bathroom depreciated by 25%. The flooring has depreciated, the fridge, the stove. You can do that at the same time. July come and you need a loan. And you're like, listen, this house is worth so much. You can do that. <laughs> right. Honestly, the only thing you can actually do that for. So use it to your advantage. I mean, pretty sure there are all the things that you can use to build wealth, but it's been shown over and over again that real estate is the true path. Yeah, so, I absolutely, absolutely. The number one, I'm going to say it again, the number one. Numero uno. Numero uno. And, and like you said, all other groups are doing what they can to get their people to, you know, uh, into home ownership. And I appreciate you uh, putting that platform together and start having those conversations, right? And so speaking of that, though, so what are right now, 
some resources available to Haitians, well, not specifically to Haitians, but that are available that Haitians can take advantage uh, advantage of. Because a lot of times, you know, you hear about down payment assistance, mm -hmm. uh, closing cost assistance, and things like that. So, uh, if somebody right now who interested in 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 getting a home and and there are resources out there, what, there are a lot. What, yeah, what what are some of the ones that you know? Maybe they can you know check it out. Yeah, you know. yeah. One would be the Bank of America, actually. I know they're pushing out a new program. They have the zero down, zero mm -hmm. closing, but it's not available everywhere yet. It's a satellite program they're testing. But if you're in Miami, then you can take advantage of that program. Also, they do have other programs available already that you can take advantage of that gives in certain parts of Broward and Miami did, you get about 10,000 in down payments, 7,500 in closing costs, but you have to meet the requirements. You have to go to home ownership classes. Mm -hmm. There's this, what is it called? There's another program that gives zero down, zero closing costs. I forgot the name, but I'll pull up the name quickly. That program is also, I, I, I say that, yeah, copier. Bank of America, I'm copier because oh, really? that program has yeah that it's naka 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 there you go uh, yeah naka has that. existed for years now they have their headquarters they've been around for since when 90s i believe and they've been doing the zero down zero closing except naka will test you okay so what will be by vag avec naka because it's it takes a lot longer but they will vet you until you cry and then you will own that home with zero down and zero closing. Wow. That's not a, I know that the cities have their own, but the only thing to watch out for are they rent? Are they a second loan on your house? Because a lot of the programs you need to look at, when do they forgive that amount? You know, if Miami Dade is giving, I think $35,000, but they will not forgive that loan until 30 years. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you either go with another program that gives a little less, that will be a grant that they will forgive, let's say after five years, because most people live in their house for five years or so. For example, the Bank of America, they will forgive that after five years. So that's, to me, although they're giving less, it's a better choice, more freedom. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want with your property after five years versus... 30 years like that sounds too long yeah, to be yeah. tied up to something so um there are programs available in and in and that's in, in every state yeah but our community we lack in credit that's mm. probably one of my biggest issue with our people mm. our credit is terrible so mm. please work on your credit and do it for yourself and for anything that you'll do in life when it comes to borrowing money you'll need credit unless you're planning on buying everything cash. But if you're planning on using a mortgage, you need credit. So there are programs available still and, yeah. you know, reach out, we'll let you know which one you're qualified for. All of them has, you know, their own specific credits. They're asking for income. All of them are income limited. So it's mostly for people making a little, you know, under a hundred K. So if you're making more than that, most likely it's not for you. Mm -hmm. And there aren't that many programs available for high earners. So because 100 in the U.S., you're a high earner at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's good. That's good. And and once again, you know, your platform is available and, and, and is ready to share those resources. So anybody listening right now, you are interested in getting a home, you're interested in finding, okay, what's the next step or what's the first step, you should definitely reach out to Haitian Realty and Lori. She will guide you and put you in the right direction. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. This was great. Um, we're going to transition to you know, the, the rapid fire. We call it rapid fire, but it's really <laughs> just getting some, getting people to, to he said, whoo, you took a deep breath. <laughs> I got burned. Me. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's basically, we don't want you to think a lot. It's the first thing that comes to mind. It's light. Um, so the first one is, the biggest lesson you learn in life outside of Haitian Realty, just the biggest lesson that Lori has learned. Biggest lesson. Biggest lesson is to 
be, I don't know, respect other people's opinions and feelings and yeah i think in life that's that's one thing i'm trying just be respectful of other people's feelings i mean we live in an era where everybody's a little bit we get to be sensitive and i'm mm -hmm. learning to be very respectful of people's feelings things, yeah. Uh, identity yeah. Feelings, yeah things like that so that's that's <laughs> I, you're I, not the I, only I, thing that matter in this world is basically what you're saying other people exist and they have their own space right? absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah all right good awesome perfect so what's your uh, favorite book favorite book right now is um my real estate coloring book for kids okay so my daughter and i put together a real estate coloring book oh, it's available nice. on amazon <laughs> And it's available. Look well, at that. Available. Drop the name. Don't that's just say cool. my real estate right? coloring. What's the name? <laughs> that's what it's called. Oh, that's what it's called? That's my what it's called. That's... Real estate around me. Let's see if I have a... No, I don't have a copy near me, but it's called mm. real estate around me. Nice. Real estate around me. I'll definitely check that out. That's okay. Awesome. And it's by you and your daughter? Correct. Oh, nice. Mm. Good look my at you. My daughter Good. is like, if you look at the little... Things this anime, it's the illustrations, her, the illustration. Uh -huh. So it's 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 her, it's her oh, picture. Nice. The illustrator look at it and just draw it. That's all right. Author. And my illustrator was actually in Haiti. Oh, good. Okay. So I good, good, with good. Haitian, Haitian illustrator. illustrator. Good. Okay. Haitian, Haitian. I, I might need to connect with you after this episode. <laughs> good, good, good. It's the real for Haitian by Haitian. Everybody's Haitian. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love oh, it. man. Awesome. 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 So outside of real estate, and don't say being a parent, because I know you're going to say that based on the conversation so far, but what do you do for fun? Um, I like to play tennis. Oh, good. Okay. I, I do like to go shopping. <laughs> so you're, you're an outdoorsy person. What? <laughs> Hey, what, I, yeah. what, what, why are you whispering the shopping part? I know why she's whispering. We know why she's whispering shopping. I don't even want to repeat the shopping. Because then my wife will be like, see other people doing it. No. I like the good shopping. Yeah, I also like Amazon too. Not <laughs> oh, God. My favorite site. Oh. Um, but yeah, and going out to eat. Oh, that's, that's fun too. Yeah. Of course, as nice. soon as I say the word shopping, my wife opens the door. So you see what I'm saying? It's just something about shopping <laughs> that with the ladies. Just, man. Yeah, man. It's just ladies. You can't compete. You that. cannot That's, compete. We need that. And okay. it, shopping loves us too. I'm sure it does. It, <laughs> it doesn't love us though, but it, it <laughs> loves y'all. It loves y'all very much. Oh man. <laughs> oh god. All right, Laurie, c'est un réel plaisir de là avec nous et nous vraiment apprécier uh, learning about your story, le learning about your platform and your commitment to the Haitian community to help them uh, with home ownership and help them with building wealth. And that is, you know, something that we are for here as well. And in Corum and Haitian Middle Money, we are trying to push our people into you know, being financial literate and then, you know, it start building well. So we appreciate you coming, stopping by and dropping gems and sharing your knowledge with us. So we truly appreciate that. Absolutely. It was an absolute pleasure. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Thank you for sharing your mind with us. Um, it was fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yep. So now if, if somebody is listening, right, they, they, they heard everything about, you know, what you were saying earlier about homeownership and they want to stay connected or ask you a few questions or ask you, Hey, where do I start? How do I start? So how they can, how can they find you? Um, everywhere on social media, um, it's mm -hmm. Haitian Realty, at Haitian Realty on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter on well TikTok, TikTok everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. head over to our we have our website HaitianWilty.com. Um, we have a phone um, 239-220-6233. What else do we have? You can email us info at HaitianWilty.com. 
um, you, you'll find us everywhere, basically, <laughs> at Haitian Realty, everywhere. They would, they would type in Haitian Realty. Listen, you have Love to really. find us. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Once again, thank you, and thank you, everybody, for listening, and um, pas oublier, continuer sur le podcast là, et objectif, vous êtes toujours venir avec Young Haitian Millennials pour pour côté avec uh, you know new ideas pour venir apprendre uh, de you même histoire yo ça régler you know platform you gain i think you uh, you know if you have any questions about those things you can reach out to them and be exposed to those things so thank you follow us everywhere um uh, IG uh, YouTube uh, Apple podcast everywhere and then Banoloba hey souterrain et podcast ça très branché pour prochain épisode là très branché c'est des amis pour Marc avec des amis pour Luther ciao ciao ah ouais